Hey there, welcome back to Art with Sarah Lee. And here is my fabulous assistant, Miss Marlo. How are you doing today? Good, I have a mop under the table. She has a mop under the table. We are so glad to be back. Oh, she does have a mop under the table. Um, we would like to give a shout out this week to Miss Charlotte and Mr. Elliot for sending awesome pictures of your egg carton caterpillars. Yes. They were mind blown by them. And we were. And your awesome sunflower garden project. Thank you guys and thanks for sending me pictures. So in regards to sending pictures, at the bottom of our video in the description box, we will have an email. And if you would like to send me what you've been working on, we will definitely give you a shout out here. We are working on, hopefully, being able to find a space where we can put everybody's work up so everybody can see everybody else's work. This is oh, we've got a sketchbook. Hot chocolate. Today, uh, we would also like to give a shout out to everyone who's been watching and also everybody who has been subscribing. Wow, that is just amazing. It's been really exciting. We're excited to have you here and we're excited to be here, aren't we? And I'm excited that I have a mop. And a mop. You know what's interesting about this mop is, look at that. That's straight and from here is a point to here is a point. That has to do with what we're going to talk about today. What is that? Lines. Line. Today, we are going to talk about line. We are going to need, uh, we are going to need, we are going to suggest that you have your sketchbooks from last week ready. And, and if you don't have your sketchbooks ready, that's okay, because today's supplies are paper. They can be drawing paper. Hold on just a second. Drawing paper, graph paper, newsprint, uh, scrap paper. We've got ballpoint pens, colored pencils, pen like a rollerball, Sharpie, and for fun, we've got some watercolor. And so, a mop. And a mop. So any one of these supplies will do. We're very excited to share line with you. And a mop. Okay. Alrighty. Hey, here we are and uh, ready to talk about line. And you know what? I'm going to run over our supplies just one more time really quick. Marlo, what are you going to draw your lines in? Are you going to use your sketchbook that you made last week? Yes. Awesome sauce. So, I've got my sketchbook. I also have um, just a variety of different types of paper. Graph paper, drawing paper. Um, newsprint paper, I have scraps of printing paper, and I just have clean printing paper. I also have, um, I added a few things that I didn't say earlier. I've got drawing pencils. We added in crayons. We've got some colored pencil. We've got watercolor brushes and a set of watercolors because you can draw lines with that. Um, regular pencil, a gel pen, you can use ballpoint, and I also have a Sharpie, and I think I'm going to use a Sharpie for a little bit just so you guys can see that. So, and also we have here a really great definition of line. Line is considered a path created by a moving point, mark, or object. Okay, are we ready to get started, Miss Marlowe? Maybe. Okay. All righty. So, let's open this up. Let's see. Fresh, clean page somewhere in here. And, whoop. Let's see. There we go. All righty. Miss Marlowe, can you tell me some, let's see, some types? Types of line. What do we got? Horizontal. Okay. Um, see horizontal. Horizontal is what is horizontal? An angle. Oh, an angle. It's also known as a. Is there a direction? So there's direction of line as oh, well. Um, Let's see. The types. Types thin. What is it? What is? Yeah. Okay. There are thin, thin lines. Large. Oh, large. What is another good word for large that's kind of opposite? If it's not thin, it's 
thick. Thick. Ah, nice. All right. Um, Are there wavy lines? Yes. Okay, we've got the dash, wavy. Dashed lines. Oh, we have, let's see. Oh, you know what? We'll give a little illustration here. We have dashed. I just said that. Boop, 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 boop. Ooh, what about dotted? Dotted. Dotted lines. And what's a really fun one? It's kind of angular. <laughs> Zigzag. What do you say? That sound good? Bum, 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 bum. So direction, you had mentioned horizontal. What other directions are there? Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. What's up and down? Horizontal is sideways. Horizontal. And what is up and down? Da. Starts with a V. Oh. Mm. Vertical. Vertical. All right. And then there's this fun one. Woo, from one point, da, 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 one da, corner da. to another corner. And it starts with a D. Diagonal. Oh, hey, okay. diagonal. I keep forgetting. Okay. So we've got types of line, thin, thick, wavy, dashed, dotted, zigzag, and we've got directional, or direction of line, horizontal, vertical, diagonal. And you know what, guys? These are the ones that we just thought of sitting here. It's the morning. We might be a little foggy. There's other kinds of lines, too. You might have a spiral. You could have, this is wavy, but what if you had really curvy? Okay, now something else that's really great about line is um, line can, let's see, I'm going to use this pen now. When you combine, actually, you know what, we're going to switch back to Sharpie for a second. When you combine lines, combine lines, what do you get? Uh, if I take three horizontals and I add it to three verticals, <gasps> that's basket weave. I get a basket weave. Which is a pattern. Basket weave. Yes, that is exactly what that is. Pattern. I'm going to move my hand out of the way. Wait, for well, all can, to see. can I demonstrate with a sharpie too? Yeah, here you go. You want to draw a basket weave? Well, no, I'm going to draw. Oh, so let's put those together, and what do we get? A dental. Nice, a dental pattern. That you mostly see on walls of castles. Oh, and then if we combine maybe two, let's see, we'll combine two diagonals. X. Or we combine a, a, a vertical and a horizontal, we get the crisscross. Chris cross. Chris cross. Okay, let's see what else is there. Oh, and then we've got spiral, and that's always fun. Con connecting a spiral pattern. Alrighty. So we've got a combination of lines, which gives us pattern. Pattern. Which is going to be very important for our next project. Okay. But before we get to our next project, I'm also going to talk really quick about boldness or thickness of line. I'm going to use a pencil to show this too. So what I've talked about with my students before is when you have a loud line. And the loud line or a very hard line. And then you could have a whisper soft line. Hello. <laughs> and this guy is Hello. I'm gonna do a creepy hello. hello. Yeah, that's that's kind of creepy. Hello, creepy. Oh wow, wiggly crazy line. There we go. Okay. The interesting thing about the about the the bold line or the thin line 
is this is really great for when you need to show something has weight. So if we were to draw a circle, and I've drawn it all in the same weight, but if I draw it like this, and I put the thickest line at the bottom, our circle is now kind of sitting. It has weight. It's heavier at the bottom. For instance, if I were to draw a cube, and I'm going to draw that, and you know what? Let's take this to this so everybody can see it much better. We'll draw a cube, and I'm going to draw it all in the same weight line. There we go. My wonk. It's a little bit of a wonky cube. Can I see? Uh huh. There we go. Alrighty. But now, if I were to draw that a little bold. Can I try? Yeah, do you want to grab a pencil and open up your sketchbook? Here you go. I've got some colored pencils here that you can do the same with. While you're opening up your sketchbook and beginning to draw, I'm going to keep going. So, this shows weight. And here's something. You have intersection of line. So you can show when one thing sits in front of another. So say if we have a tall box and it is sitting in front of, or yeah, yeah, tall box, and it's sitting in front of, what is it it's sitting in front of? Ooh, ooh, a pyramid. Alrighty, bring that down. Okay, we've got this intersection here. So we're going to get a little darker where things intersect. And that says, hey, I'm in front. I am the box in front, and you are the pyramid behind. And then we're going to wait. We're going to give this a bit of weight. And so that says, hey, that's where we're sitting. And put a let's put a ball back there for fun. Show where we intersect. Is this good? Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. It's like we're looking. For me, I'm looking into it. See, that's also a person's perspective too. I feel like that's a wastebasket. We're looking down into it. Okay, I'll make it a wastebasket. Um. And let's see, one last thing. Oh, so with this idea of weight in line, you can make your lines interesting. Maybe you've got a wavy line, but it's different weights. See, I'm pressing and I'm pulling back. You could have a curvy line, and it's different weights throughout. Yeah, are you looking for? Oh, yeah, there's some stuff in that wastebasket. Mm -hmm. And then a uh, zigzag. Yeah, and then we'll get to the paintbrush really quick. So, we are talking about weight. Did I spell weight right? Maybe. <laughs> Just making sure. There we go, guys. All right, so last but not least, we're going to reuse this piece of paper, and we are going to do some lines in watercolor. That's fun, too. Yay, finally. Watercolor. Pop up for just a quick second and get my water. We've got our water here. I'm the first person to do it. Pop on, pop on it. in. Alrighty. So I'm going to grab some orange because orange is like my favorite color, man. My, co We're my, gonna... co my favorite color, I don't think it's in here. Oh. I've got lots of favorite colors. Do you have one? Like one ultimate favorite color? Yes. What is it? Is it turquoise? Kind of yeah. turquoise, Robin Zaki blue. <laughs> All right, so we've got some watercolor, and this is just a real quick demo, um, because you can do great line with uh, watercolor too. You can do great with line with all kinds of paints. It was just easy for us to show. I think watercolor. That's a footprint. We've got a zigzag. We've got These a dental. Oh, a dental that prints. intersects our zigzag. These are animal footprints. Oh, kind of dashed. 
or dotted. So you can have fun with mine with all different kinds of mediums. And bike way. I wish I had my mop here. There we go. How Spiral. I oh, and you know what? Um, I think I think that's it for right now. It's time to go on to our awesome extra special project, which I will spell out up here. Let's see. Here we go. We are moving on. Where are we going to take this line? All this extraordinary line information. We are going to take it and decorate some. You can use line to spell. Some eggs. Why? Because it's going to be Easter. Easter. Wait, wait, wait. And all right. Let's move on. Yeah. Okay. Hello. We are back. And now we're sitting down. Oh, we were sitting down. What's different? Oh, we're switched. We're switched. Okay. So we just learned about line. We learned about curvy, wavy, dashed, dotted, diagonal, horizontal. Where are we going to take all that? What can we, what can we make out of that? Hmm. What holiday is coming up? Well, it's my favorite. Well, one of my favorite. Christmas is also my favorite. Easter! It's Easter. Easter is on Sunday. Um, and for some people who and that you might celebrate Easter, you might celebrate spring, you might celebrate, oh my gosh, I am just so happy to have some sunshine. We are going to take all of that information that we learned about line and we are going to decorate some paper eggs. Okay. And so to make these paper eggs, and you're going to find out what happened to this guy right here. You're going to need some paper, and it could be printing paper or drawing paper. Um, it could be the graph paper. It could be notebook paper. Oh, You're going to need some scissors. We've got scissors. Uh, glue stick. I made a template out of a waffle box uh, for my egg, but you could also draw them just freehand if you'd like, or have an adult, your adult, whoever that might be, help you out. Yes? Waffles. She loves waffles. We've got a pencil. We have some markers. We have some Crayolas. And to decorate too, I thought, you know, sometimes you need some fun, wacky paper. Where are you going to get fun, wacky paper? Well, we cut up some birthday bags, some gift bags, and used our fun, and th there's this. I think this is going to make a great fun, wacky paper. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're going to make an egg. But what do we do with the egg? Well, how are we going to carry that egg around? Oh, go get it. Oh, I think I've got it right here. Come sit down. All right. I think we're going to make a basket da, 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 for, for our egg. Okay, so this is one of our eggs. Oh, wait, uh, just a second. Can you hold on just a second? Okay. Can you, what do you see in there? What kind of Dash lines? Line. Curve line, yeah. Back swirly, and then just back and forth line. Yeah. So we've got an egg, and you know what this was made out of? Oh my gosh! Can you show us? Yep. Oh, be careful because there might we're drying them all out for for a project that's coming up. I don't want you to drink. Oh no, it doesn't. It smells pretty good. Um, but we made it out of a half gallon milk carton. Um, and what we did is, here, hold on a second. Let's put this down for just a second. Can you hand me the part that I cut off? We cut it off. Okay. Oh, nice hat. It can make a hat too. Anyhow, that's okay. where we're headed. Okay. So let's start. We're going to start with the eggs first. Okay. And then we will get to our basket. Alrighty. Alrighty. We are back. We've kind of cleared the table of our extra supplies that we'll explain in a moment. And what I've done is I've just taken printer paper and I have made an egg template out of my waffle box. Marlo loves waffles. Um, and then I've traced that template onto my printer paper. Who said waffles? <laughs> and I've also traced it on Marlo's and I've traced four eggs for her. Okay. 
and she is beginning to work on those eggs now. Now, as soon as you trace that out, you guys can start decorating your eggs. And you're like, wait, what are we gonna decorate them with? Oh, well, we can start with some markers and you've got lines. So we can do straight lines. You can do your zigzag. There's some zigzag. We can take another color. We're gonna do some dots. We might want to outline our egg. Whew, that's a nice big curvy line. Let's see, and we've got some wavy lines. There we go. And then, let's see, what else can we add? You can color, oh, I think we're gonna put some more dots in. There we go, and we're gonna put in a little line here. Oh, and I think we're gonna go around these guys. There you go. Oh, we're gonna, there we are, okay. So I've used marker on that one. If you guys can see this here, this one, I did lines with Sharpie. And this one, this is fun. So I took some, I've cut my gift bag apart. Just took a side right out of there. Probably could have used that again. But in this time period, we're kind of using what we've got around the house. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes we have a little excess of the gift bag. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm going to take that and I am going to cut some wavy. There we go. You might want help from your adult. There we go. I'm going to measure it across here. I'm going to trim right there. And then, I, oh gosh, that was Eloise. She was coming to make some eggs too. <laughs> Whoopsie. Alrighty. And I've got another curvy line. Who knew that all these lines would come in handy on the Easter egg? There we go. I'm going to trim that guy right there. Let's see. I'm going to use my glue stick. You could use glue. Um, I like to use glue. When I do use glue, I like to use it with a Q-tip. I'm going to use my glue stick. We're going to stick that down right there. And I might come back in with some marker on top of that or maybe some Crayola, but it's great. You know what? You might think of some other ideas to decorate your eggs with, or some other papers. Do you know what's really interesting is the inside of envelopes. There's oftentimes beautiful patterns on the inside of envelopes that your adult may receive in the mail. Let's see, I'm gonna use the blue. Oh, we're gonna outline these. There we go. Oh, and then I'm gonna do some curvy here. Oh yeah, all right. So, how are you doing? Oh, you've got some scallops, I love it. And I really like what's going on here. Oops. Okay, so you wanna finish up your egg? Yes. And then we will move on to the next part. Hi guys, alrighty, I am back and these are the supplies we are going to use for making our Easter baskets. Okay, so you need a um, half gallon, uh, it could be any type of half gallon uh, container. It could be orange juice, milk, um, I'm trying to think what else comes in half gallons like that. But the paper half gallon container, um, you could use a tissue box, an empty tissue box, and it could be either this size or it could be this size. We need our cardboard, trusty cardboard to cut, uh, so we have a surface to cut on. We also have a straight edge, and this is a straight edge, and it's a ruler. I've got a mat knife, a pencil, um, glue stick, scissors, a stapler, and I have a variety of papers here. Um, we've got our tried and true construction paper, old school. Um, we have a book, um, scrapbooking paper. We also have uh, the scrapbooking, um, the cardstock paper, and we've got the decorative paper, and, and then I've just got some other scraps of color. 
down here. Alrighty, uh, so to begin with, we're gonna take our milk carton, alrighty, and I randomly guessed, you know, just almost like a hand's width in height, which I think is around three and a half inches if you wanna get specific, but this is really more, you know, just, you can eyeball how large you want your basket to be. And I started kind of giving myself a point and using the mat knife, there we go. Just cut through the milk carton. There we go. You can go. You can measure all the way around. Um, I've cut. I've cut a lot of milk cartons. Uh, so there we go. Okay. So that's the bottom. Oh, we still have some liquid in that one. That's what we need our tissues for. We'll just wipe that up. And this one is still wet, not clearly. So we'll put that down there. And I have a dry one. Okay. If you're going to use the Kleenex box, um, you're going to want to cut the top out. You can cut uh, the sides, but if you do, um, you're going to want to tape it because of the way the Kleenex box is made. It likes to come apart very easily. So, and let me say this too, I'm doing some cutting with a mat knife. That's what you want your adult to do. Um, ask for some help with that. The Kleenex box, uh, it can be cut with scissors. It's a little, it's a little persnickety. Um, so I would definitely just use the mat knife. Ask your adult for help. All right, I'm gonna cut the top of the Kleenex box. I'm just gonna cut, and I'm just leaving a bit of a lip just because it's easier. Kleenex boxes are so awesome too, y'all. You can make all kinds of things with these guys. Oh, see how that already, it comes undone super easily. Okay, so let's see if I can get in there. Oh, I think I need to change this blade. Okay, there we go. And here's the cool part. We have a stapler. So I am just gonna staple that right back together. Okay, so we've got our boxes. Oh, and I've pre-cut this guy, so we have that. I'm gonna move these off. Let's see, move this over. And for the next part, what I'm doing is, so that you can see, I'm going to measure and I'm just gonna cut the paper and if you'll notice I didn't go all the way um, around you can't go all the way around um, I'm not really sure why I didn't go all the way around I know that I tried to use one piece and folded it so it would go around um, I did do a box where I did each piece separately and it seems to look better and kind of go better if you use one long piece and and you fold it so with that in mind we are going to use one long piece i'm going to turn my paper what i call portrait style i am going to put my box here and i'm going to make a mark and i'm going to make a mark down here okay so i know that that's the height that's going to be the height of my grass for my basket and I'm going to cut this little, what did we just learn about line? Zigzag. I'm going to cut this zigzag line. And you know what? While I'm going to, while I'm doing this, I'm going to ask Miss Marlo. Hey, Marlo. Boo. Would you like to go get your little scissors so you can cut grass? Awesome sauce. Okay. So she's cutting. Woo. Zigzag. Lots of zigzag. All righty. Okay, do you have your scissors? Come on over. All right. Would you like to do one out of the colored paper? Um. Okay. Quick, quick. Uh -huh. How about, oh, how about this? The grass is that? Um, well, or we could do a decorative. 
you know what? I know what we'll do. How about this? I'm going to fold this and you can start putting one together. How's that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to take our box. Alrighty. And I'm going to kind of line it up in the middle. And I'm going to fold this to one side and I'm going to fold this to one side because I just want to see where it ends. And you know what? That's a piece of construction paper. Uh, just a regular piece of construction paper. And it's really nice because it goes straight to the edge. So what we're going to do is I'm going to mark this there and there so I can come back over here and I can make that fold. Okay. Fold that there. I'm going to fold that here. Okay. Are you ready to staple? Mm -hmm. Okay. Coolio. So this is what it looks like. All I've done is I've got my piece of paper. I have folded it and it fits right onto my box. Now, you're gonna wanna go all the way down. There we go. And it, it takes a little bit of muscle. You got it? Okay, how about you hold the box and I will staple. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay. So we're gonna go all the way down. Okay. And there we go, let it go, uh-huh. Can this be mine? Yeah, this is yours. Yay. There we go, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this side. All right, and then I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna staple here, and I'm gonna staple right here. Okay, I'm gonna keep those little pieces of grass up. All right, so how about this? I'm gonna cut one really quick out of this decorative piece of paper for this, this, this box right here. So how about you pick out a handle for your basket out of one of the papers, okay? All right, y'all, we are gonna take this, okay, and like the other, I am gonna lay it down. So I've got my, this is just decorative scrapbooking paper that I actually had and it was just pre, it was just cut in half. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna line up my Kleenex box with the bottom of it, make a mark, and I'm going to come to the end and make a mark. That tells me how high the Kleenex box is. I'm going to take my straight edge, and we're not going to do a, oh, you know what? We could do a scallop edge on this one. Let's give it a whirl. I'm not going to cut that straight off. Let's see what I can do really quick here. Oh, yeah. This also might be for your adult to help you with. The other thing is you could draw your scallop edge out and cut with your scissors. So you have a pattern to follow. Alrighty, here we go. And there. And the next step was, we're gonna put this down, kind of find the center. We're gonna fold that up and fold this side. We're kind of a little bit short, but that's okay. You can go all the way around if you want. You would just need another scrap of paper. There we go. You got your handle ready, Bug? Uh-huh. It's going to be this. Oh, okay. Awesome sauce. All right. We will take this, and we are going to staple this to the tissue box. Let's see. Okay. Can I get your help? Do you want to hold that right there? And I'm going to staple the, I'm going to staple the top first to kind of stabilize it. I'm going to turn this. Okay, I'm going to turn it. Doop, 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 doop. I'm going to turn it again. Can I turn it again? Thanks, buddy. Okay, so I stapled the top to stabilize it and then I'm going to go all the way down. Use a little muscle there. Now, some people might be like, you know what? Why aren't you just gluing that paper to the milk carton and to the Kleenex box? Because it's very slick. Look, I try and I try and do that to it. Mm -hmm. Just it's waxy. It's treated and glue uh, things uh, and paint. And I know this. We've already tried, um, but glue won't stick to this. And so that's why we're using 
the milk carton. And you know, one other thing I need to mention is, what do we have to do to these milk cartons before we can use them? Cut them. Before we even cut them. Dry them. Dry them, and why do we have to dry them? Because it will get all soggy. Oh, and but what did we do with them? What was in there before? Milk. Milk. So you've got to make sure that your adult helps you wash out your milk carton, okay? That's a big pointer. Wash out the milk carton and you can cut it and then you let it dry. Yes? Also, if you just want to make one of these, you can decorate it and make it into a hat for a parade or something. There you go, the Easter parade. All right, are we ready for your handle? Yes. Okay. All oh, right. my beautiful hat. So we have this covered. We've got yours covered. All right. So, and this is your handle? Uh-huh. Okay. That's my handle. All right, great. Wait, actually, can this be my handle? Yep, this can be your handle. Okay, so this is a piece of cardstock, and again, any type of your paper. With the scrapbooking paper, you might want to double it or, like, fold it over if you're going to use that as your handle. But this cardstock makes a pretty great handle. Um, and we're going to tuck this in on one side, and we're going to staple it. Let's see. And we're going to tuck it in on the other side. You but, can, but it's inside the milk carton. Oh, yep. I'll show them in just a second. That's a good point. There we go. And it is. It's on the inside. Hey, guys. For some odd reason, we had a little snippet there. So um, we recovered this so you can see how we got this far. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Miss Marla, will you hold this? So what we did is, you saw where we covered this and we had just stapled this handle on. So we're going to staple this handle on one more time. Just quick, quick. Thank you for your patience. You know, it is. This time in life right now, today, in our world, what it's all about being flexible. And tired. Are you tired? Mm -hmm. All right. So I've stapled uh, the handle on, and as I think I was just telling you, you can see I stapled it on the inside. Alrighty. And we are going to take this egg and we are going to put it right here. Would you like to put some glue stick on that? There you go. And with an extra strip of paper, actually, I'm going to take this is about an inch thick, and again, this is the cardstock, scrapbooking cardstock, it's 12 inches long. I am going to take this and quickly cut a zigzag line. Okay. Let's see. I bet I've cut enough for the front. We'll cut that off right there. Let's see. Got it. Awesome. So she has glued the egg to the front of our basket. And then I am going to, I'm going to cut this off there. I just measured, made a little piece of grass. I'm going to put this right here. Would you like to glue some of that? Is it everybody's lunchtime? I think it's our lunchtime for sure. Okay, you got it? All right, that's super great. We are going to put that over the top there. And we have an egg sitting in the grass. And now we not only have one basket, but we magically have four baskets. Um, this one got finished out uh, off um, on screen, but off screen. Um, and again, we just glued the eggs there. We cut a strip and cut our zigzag line in and uh, glued that to the Kleenex box. Um, Y'all, thank you so much for being with us today. We are so excited about this project. We are a bit tired and we need some lunch, uh, but we're gonna go and do that. Um, yes? I could just fall asleep on all of this basket. Oh my goodness. Well, we don't wanna do that. We would squish all our work that we just got done. Let's well, say goodbye, okay? okay? So we're gonna say goodbye. Please stay well, stay safe, and navigate with grace. We will see you here next week. And what? Happy Easter!